percent of, patient, of patients believe it's important for any health institution, regardless of type or location, to have access to their full medical history in order to deliver high quality care. Our next pre presenter brings a true passion for empowering consumers to revolutionize healthcare as the founder and CEO of Humetris. She's actively engaged in the government's policy debate, serving as a strong advocate for consumer health information access. I'm excited to welcome her straight from, uh, straight from Capitol Hill, where she will share the state of affairs and where it lies and um, how, how they are working to push important legislation through. Let's welcome Bettina Experton to the stage. Good morning, and thank you, Jill, for inviting me this morning and sharing with you our experience at Umetrics in working closely with government here in the US, the federal government, but also abroad. And this has been our strategy for day one. You cannot just sit by the sideline and wait policies to be made when you want to shape an industry. Um, so when it comes to healthcare, indeed, the federal government is uh, not to be avoided. Largest payer by far, it's a regulator, it's a policy maker. But digital health, the federal government has fueled our industry with a high-tech act, $30 billion were invested in digitalizing healthcare. But then the federal government turned to our industry in that innovation space because it had to make use of that investment for that information to flow, no more information blocking. And it has to start with consumers who have to access, cues, and share their information wherever they are so we can truly transform healthcare in their hands with technology in their hands. And so that has been our mission with Umetrics. And I would like to, in a snapshot, go over this journey of several years in the making. So everything started for us in, uh, with the every single branch the federal government. So our land sea journey started in 2010. It was, I believe, in August of 2010 when President Obama came up with his breakthrough new initiative and the common sense approach. Let's give Americans, starting with federal programs covering those Americans, have easy access to their health care. It was about a button, a button on a patient portal, and it was called Blue Button. So we, of course, embrace that initiative, but for us, using the technology in the hands of many, uh, we are talking about the smartphone, in your pocket at all time when you have to access your information and share it wherever you receive healthcare in a very complex and, and disconnected healthcare system, that initiative had to be mobile. So we responded to the call of the HHS, of the ONC, uh, who carries that initiative, a call for innovation to industry around the Blue Button Initiative. And we had a mobile health exchange platform for patient consumers to share their data. So we called it I Blue Button, me the patient can share my Blue Button data, whether it's a claim data uh, from Medicare, and we want multiple awards from HHS, and starting with turning that Medicare claim data into usable, actionable information, creating a longitudinal health record on the smartphone of the user patient. So it's right there to share their medical information wherever they uh, receive care. And uh, in doing so, we got noticed by another important regulatory agency on the federal government side, the FTC, which regulates uh, matters, critical matters in healthcare about privacy and security. And our architecture with iBlueButton was privacy by design, privacy by default with all the data, if they were pulled or received on that smartphone locally stored, not, not in the cloud, uh, free of cyber attacks, it's on my phone, me the consumer, I have total control over it. So in 2014, the FTC showcased iBlueButton uh, in terms of its privacy by design, uh, infrastructure and structure and uh, technology design. Um, the other important regulatory agency in the field of government you have to worry about is the FCC. The FCC uh, wants to give consumers, American, 
uh, access uh, to information with modern technology. And uh, we received a significant award in the summer of 2016, the FCC Chairman Award for Accessibility with our SOS QR platform, which is about emergency care for anyone to use. And then we cannot forget the FDA. In the last two years, the FDA has been working on its policies to address to this new digital health world and with regard to patient-facing technology, when should they regulate uh, um, software as a medical device? And um, our, our third platform, uh, Tansio, which is a chronic care management platform, patient-facing again, it's a coaching uh, application and platform for patients to use uh, a clinical guideline embedded in an expert system in the application uh, to manage uh, over time, their hypertension and get their blood pressure under control. That, uh, the FDA, with its final guidance in December last year, uh, says that such an application, such a coaching application, should not be regulated as a medical uh, device. And uh, the FDA has issued also draft guidance. You have to review uh, and respond to them, but again, they bring clarification to that space, which is critically uh, important. And, um, but along that journey, it, it has been lengthy. It came with frustration. You wanted those policies and initiatives to come to scale and impact everyone in the US. And uh, CMS fell somewhat short to embrace the Blue Button Initiative. So um, Congress stepped in. It has been the 21st Century Act, uh, which uh, kind of simplified you know, those meaningful use requirements and call for solution against information blocking and, and call for patients access to their health information. But that's not quite enough. 21st Century Act doesn't solve all that information blocking issue, especially in the hands of consumers. So I got a call from uh, Congress to testify at an important hearing of the Energy and Commerce uh, Subcommittee hearing. And it was to discuss the role of mobile application uh, in healthcare. So um, it was a wonderful opportunity to, to state uh, where we were and where we had to go next. Um, and I had that opportunity. That was so in the summer of 2016. And then those members of Congress um, in that hearing came to me afterwards and asked me to help them draft new legislation to go one step further to achieve that ultimate goal for Americans to have their longitudinal health record on their device. And it's in the works. The final language has, to, has been approved, and it's expected to be introduced very shortly. So please stay tuned. So indeed, we started with the federal government embracing that Blue Button Initiative. Uh, which still has to deliver for all Americans, and we developed those platforms using that open data policies and accompanying, in fact, those policies in terms of blue button, we just didn't simply respond to a call for innovation. We accompanied the federal government in drafting standards uh, and uh, regulations so that the consumer side of the data flow will be in line with regulation on the provider side. And uh, with several other industry members, we did shape up those blue button and open data policy on the consumer side, uh, led by uh, the ONC, uh, the White House. Um, but in doing so, in 2013, interestingly, um, um, in Europe, uh, the same movement was taking place. Governments were responding for the call uh, of their citizen for transparency and access to information, and the NHS ask us to develop a prototype, a UK prototype of our iBlue button platform to give UK, British citizens access to their health data. That was 2013. Then they had an innovation competition called Testbed, and uh, we were one of a few technology uh, selected for deployment at the regional level. Our region was a Sheffield region uh, in England uh, with their perfect pathway program, uh, empowering patients with technology in their hands. 
That uh, wrapped up in December last year, and then industry stepped in. Uh, strong of that demonstration, the largest electronic medical records uh, company in the UK, Amis Health, decided to extend its offering, its technology offering, to the patient side, and selected two of our platform to be e-prescribed by 60% of GPs in England starting two weeks from now. This is a big breakthrough. Our SOSQR and Tensio uh, coaching platform are going to be e-prescribed through the EMR by GP in England. That can affect 26 million uh, British citizens, and uh, it's about to happen. So the time has come where those open data initiatives touching consumers are making a difference at scale. Um, but it's also taking place in France, and um, anything can happen at CES. And um, so two years ago, I met this young, um, brilliant uh, secretary of the Treasury. His name is, was Emmanuel Macron. And um, I met him twice. He's now the president of France. He was quite taken by your eye blue button technology because it makes sense for France. What we do with eye blue button is turn claim data into this actionable national record in the hands of citizens. France has a single payer system. It's Medicare for all. We can do the same. So I work with the Secretary uh, of Health at the time, uh, went to the Prime Minister Office of France. I was asked by the French government to announce before their parliament their own Blue Button initiative that was at the Assemblée Nationale. They took Blue Button as the first recommendation for France in their five-year plan for digital technology investment in all sectors of the economy. And uh, our Bouton Bleu French version of I Blue Button was there for members of government to showcase and turn a policy, an initiative, in something concrete and real. So it's happening in France as well. But here we are, back in the US. We had a frustration, you know, we turned Medicare data into a longitudinal health record for all on your smartphone. That was President Bush's goal in 2004, but yet not quite happened today. Uh, for years, we asked CMS to give us an API to make it really uh, easy and sturdy in terms of uh, uh, access to that data for patients to use. And so CMS finally responded to the call and this administration, embracing that in innovation, is building an API, so Fire API, uh, for the CMS Blue Button data. And uh, we are one of the industry uh, players who are testing that API. And stay tuned, it's going to be in Vegas again at HIMSS, big announcement. So here, both the executive side of the government and Congress are lining up to get the job done. So where are we today? It's 2018, it has been a long journey, humbling for us, frustrating, but I think the time has come, and I've chosen to express that. This uh, artwork of my mentor, uh, members of the Umetrix board of directors, Dr. Roger Gilman, a neuroscientist, and painter, a Nobel laureate of medicine, who has been beyond us from day one, believing in that common sense approach that consumers, patients should have access to their data to make use of it. The time has come, and it's an exciting time, and thank you all for listening to that journey.